welcome to episode number five of My Trucking Life, Truth, Trucking, and Tribulations from the Trucker's Table. In our last episode, we left off, I was working at Charles Patterson Trucking, and I had gone through some different co-drivers and everything, and uh, none of them really worked out all that well. So uh, I decided to run by myself, and I did that for a little bit, and uh, I came across this man who uh, was looking for something to do to make some extra money and everything, maybe do a little driving again. I'm not sure exactly why he wanted to do it to start with, but maybe it was just because of uh, he couldn't resist working with me. You know, you never know. Uh, we'll have to ask him and see. So uh, I tell you what, let's take a quick break and uh, we'll see if we can't bring him in and uh, talk to him and see what he thinks about trucking with me and uh, if he'd ever do it again. So. Y'all don't go nowhere. Hang around. We'll be right back. All right. Here we are. We're back with our special guest. First time ever on the Trucker's Table. Uh, Truth Trucking and Tribulations series. We have a live guest. A live guest is my uncle, the legend. He was truck driving. He told me a while ago, at least four years before I was even born. I'll be 50 next year. So, Pell Rider, Snow Lord, everybody, uh, who is it? Uh, uh, Gary, Pappy, all you roll together might come close to his experience in trucking. So, uh, I thought it'd be great to talk to him. Uh, he was my co driver. I know a lot of you people were guessing different people. Blackbeard, it was not Hank Jr., so that was crazy. <laughs> but anyway. So this is my uncle, and uh, he taught me everything I know about trucking. He hired me for my first trucking job at age 16. And I'm curious, do you have any regrets, or were you scared about putting a 16-year-old into a truck driving who'd never done it before? No, not at all. <laughs> and I had a lot of confidence in you. Yeah. So what made you want to come back and drive over the road with me running back and forth to California? The main reason I wanted to see how you do it. Yeah. And after I saw you take care of yourself and everything was going good, I was ready to get out. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Yeah. We had a lot of good times. It was a short period of time. It didn't last very long, but it was fun when it did last. Uh, the main thing he left me was something that helped me make a lot of money. Other than the experience uh, running with him, learning more than he'd already taught me from before, he left me with his logbook, and I used it. <laughs> I wish I could say I was joking. <laughs> but you got to remember, this was the late 90s, and things were a lot different back then. Um, the ELDs were not mandated and all this other stuff, and you could get away with a lot more stuff back then. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but anyway... I did that for a little while. It didn't last long. I mean, uh, the company I was driving for, Charles Patterson Trucking, as he can attest to, was not the most above board um, company. <laughs> there might have been a little bit of shady dealings going on. A little bit. Yeah. And uh, so I stayed there um, all together about three years. And... Um, the best part of it the whole time I was there was, you know, getting, of course, to run with my uncle. Um, tell us, I mean, you drove back in the day when the big trucks were gas. Oh. They, they were gas burners. First one I ever drove uh, started, I think it was 1966. And it was a six-cylinder, big six-cylinder, mm -hmm. five-speed. Single Axle International. One thing you didn't have to worry about was speeding ticket because you would get one. Never did. And then went from that to Cowboys. I drove all kind of Cowboys, the GMC, Freight Liners, Peter Bills, Kenworth. Uh, Kenworth, yeah. <laughs> he used to uh, haul cows. Uh, you would take them from where? Montgomery, Alabama to New Mexico, West Texas, and from uh, Sylvester, Georgia, mm -hmm. out there, okay. up into Kansas. 
Still not yet. Now watch this. I'm going to see how many of y'all understand what I'm about to ask him. So tell me, which interstate did you take to get out there? Which interstate? <laughs> Before the quit, I could run Interstate 10 if I was going south Texas. Uh, according to what part of New Mexico we're going to. The rest of the time we run 90, 80, inter not interstate, highway 80. Mm -hmm. Then they come along with 20. Then we could run in. Probably ran your, uh, Highway 84 a little bit. A whole lot. 84. <laughs> a lot of people don't know it, but 84 goes all the way through the yeah. country. All the way to New Mexico, through yeah. New Mexico out towards yeah. Gallup. Oh, yeah. And you just go out to Gallup a pretty good bit, too, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was, I was, I was, I was, I was the joke. That was the inside jokes. Some of you older fellows got that one, I'm sure. It wasn't no real interstate uh, no. when he first started doing all this. It was, uh, no. you were lucky if you got a decent U.S. highway. Right. And, and probably one that was more than just two lane. Right. You know, so that, that's how, as far, how far along we've come in truck driving uh, right. with uh, the interstate system. And back then, the, the way station, which was a bull hauler, then it was a lot of trips I never filled out a logbook because they never check it. Mm -hmm. And when you got on out to Texas, West Texas, so uh, whatever it run, what you could do, you didn't have to worry about it. Never got a speeding ticket on a bull wagon. But uh, they they wasn't as tight on them as they were the other ones. Because mm -hmm. they didn't want to be responsible for the load. I know one time in West Memphis, they stopped me there and said, oh, you just a little bit overweight. The guy was smart, he said, you cow too overweight. I said, open the doors to your damn office that I run one or two in. He said, I'm just cutting up. He said, go ahead. I said, all right, let him do that. <laughs> Stuff like that. Yeah. You know. Well, I imagine it was hard in those older trucks that probably didn't get good fuel mileage and it, it, with the high cost of diesel, you probably couldn't hardly afford to run. I mean, how much was diesel back then? Diesel? When I started, 23, 24 cents a gallon. 24 cents a gallon. Yeah. Let that sink in. Yeah. I know after they had the uh, increase in gas shortage in Florida, I got stuck down at Mockley, couldn't leave. I was down there a week to get enough, to get out. And I got back, I loaded and I went someplace. I was over in Mississippi and I pulled in this little uh, truck stop. Started filling up. I got nosing. Damn fuel of 78 cents a gallon. I got mad. I cut it off, went back in there and told the people, I said, I stopped at $20. I said, Y'all trying to rob people. <laughs> 78 cents a gallon, unheard of. But when you're driving them cowboys, the first ones I was driving it, not no air conditioning. And back then, a lot of truck stops had like what they call a bunkhouse. I don't know if you ever stayed in one or not, they used to have them in all the old truck stops. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where you rest at, if you don't mm -hmm. get any. And I've even run double them cab holders in this county crowded. Yeah. And far as fix fixing food and stuff like that, you, yeah. you have no way. Yeah, so room. we have coffee pots, microwaves, all this yeah. stuff in our trucks nowadays. A lot of us do, except for Pell Rider. And uh, <clears throat> shots fired. All right. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> um, they didn't have anything like that. I used to jump up in, well, I say jump up. I used to struggle and try and try my best to climb up in that daggum cab over. And I'd finally get up in there playing around. I had the big dog box up there in the front. And a little <coughs> bit of bed in the back back there, you know, just, and I was a little boy and it was a tight fit for me. So <laughs> you can imagine a grown man trying to get in there. Yeah. But tell me, how were the rates back then? What, what were y'all getting paid by the mile? <laughs> were, you, were you getting paid by the mile? You getting paid by the mile. Cattle was the highest paying thing mm -hmm. and it paid a dollar eighty five a mile one way. Mm -hmm. You got nothing coming back. Mm -hmm. That was the highest paying thing. Anywhere any from uh, 60 cents, 80. Occasionally, you get one with a dollar. Mm -hmm. 
But uh, also, uh, a lot of them was on loads yourself if you got a dollar. Stuff like that. The first truck I ever drove in my life was a 53 Ford. And it wasn't a real old truck. I was very young. It wasn't a trailer truck, it was a straight truck. Mm. Anyway, that was the first one I ever drove. But I've had, I own a 73 GMC cab over with 318 Detroit in it, 13 speed. That truck would key you. Had straight exhaust on it, and you, uh, it, you, you couldn't think when you got out of it because your head was still buzzing. Couldn't sleep because the air conditioning didn't work. It had one, it come one, it could keep it running. All you think, you could depend on that 318 to keep pouring some oil in it because it's going <laughs> out. <laughs> so it was self changing oil. Self changing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so now if you were averaging between a dollar and a dollar eighty-five a mile, even if it was just one way, and diesel was uh, less than twenty-five cents a gallon, you know nowadays guys are happy if they're making a dollar eighty-five a mile to the truck, and 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 that w this was back in the seventies. Yeah, early seventies. I started in the sixties, and this was yeah. in the seventies. And and now here it is, two thousand nineteen. And we're happy sometimes. Some of the, the people, a dollar eighty-five. I'm happy if I get a dollar eighty-five to the truck. You know, I try to keep it close to two dollars a mile if I can to the truck. But the thing about it is, is we're paying three about three dollars a gallon for diesel, anywhere from two fifty to three dollars, depending on your discount. And then look at our truck payments. How much they are? How much was uh, would, would be a payment on a truck back then? Or how much did a truck like that cost back then? Well, in nineteen seventy nine, I had a friend bought a new Kenworth over in Dothan, Alabama. Uh, with a 400 comes in, 15 over in, you pay $59,000 for it. $59,000 $59, for a brand new Kenworth. Brand new. Of course, it was a cowboy, <laughs> but yeah. conventional was about the same. Yeah. People just hadn't uh, gone to the conventional. Mm -hmm. well, they was out a few years before people really got on to them, stayed with the cowboys. Well, for a lot of the younger people that are watching that don't know, why did you run cab overs? Why were that? Why were cab overs being run so, so much? Because of the link law, they check me. Mm -hmm. I've been, I've been, uh, I, I keep measuring tape with them. They measure you, right? And uh, I forgot now, but you wasn't allowed that much. And, and at that time, we was pulling 42, 40, no more than forty-five foot trailers. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to pull a forty-foot one, and. Uh, that's why now, nobody want to go on to the conventional because of the link. Right. So we've been fortunate that they've relaxed these laws, changed yeah. these laws, and now we that you see trucks out there pulling fifty-three foot tra uh, trailers, and they're they're in these big, large, large cars that yeah. are like apartments inside. You know, they have right. full-size beds and showers and toilets and all this stuff in them. They're just huge, right. and. Um, so that tells you how far we've come uh, they, with the highways. Because if the highways, if this was the same highways that you were driving on back then, you wouldn't see those trucks on the road. <laughs> they wouldn't be allowed. But because of the interstate system, they've, uh, re they've changed the laws, and now we have all these uh, really big trucks out there and everything. Now, you've been inside my truck. What did you tell me the other day if you'd had a truck like mine back in the day? What, what would you have done? Oh, hell, they had to put a gun on to get me out of it. I wouldn't have never left. So you probably could have made a dollar or two. Look, get in your truck and look at it and know the power it's got. And remember the days I used to cross Mount Eagle with a 290? you understand. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of them with the uh, drive shafts rung in two mm -hmm. because they didn't have the power to get down and try to downshift, downshift, and snatch to drive shafts ring. Did y'all have Jake brakes back then? No. <laughs> had foot brakes. <laughs> that ain't all. Yeah. One time I was coming down Mount Eagle on a old, old Kenworth cowboy. And back then it wasn't electronic. The fuel, they had a, a line run to it with a little screw like that. I was going down Mount Eagle. 
so the cable came off and went to the floor. That's not good. Mm -hmm. and I had to reach down, get it up, hold it with my foot, and work everything over with my left foot. What brakes I was using, and because you had to gear it down, it had no jack brakes. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of the time, if you weren't careful, the trailer didn't have too good of brakes either. Yeah. Other words, DOT wasn't near like it is now. Well, how good was the ABS system back then? ABS system? I don't know what the hell it was. <laughs> I'm telling you, you better be glad you have the technology you have now. If you were driving back then, you'd be miserable. Yeah. So, so tell me this. After, uh, well, I want to clarify one thing real quick. I've told this story before, and I want to make sure I got it right. So I have the man here. He can uh, clarify it and tell us exactly what he was talking about. You told me one time, before we ever got in a truck together, when I first started truck driving, you said, Rob, if the truck ever starts feeling like it's turning over, rolling over, grab your handbrake, pull it down, and step on the gas. And was that about what you were telling me? Well, it works every time. Mm -hmm. It keeps you from laying over. If you're in a curve, I don't care how fast you're running, if you start leaning, you hit that handbrake and put it to the floor, it'll, st it'll straighten you up. I give you an example of that. Your, your daddy mm -hmm. went a trip out to West Texas with me one time. I pulled a bull away, had a load on, went around his curve. I, I was just cutting up with him. Keep, keep making sure he was awake. I said, look back there, you know, <clears throat> that trailer ship is starting to ease up. Then he started hauling back. It's clearing the ground. It's clearing the ground. I said, oh, that's okay. We better flow board. I hit this hand brake, set her back down. He said, how do you do that? I said, just, just by putting it to the floor. Mm -hmm. I said, you didn't know every time you did a sharp curve, you're supposed to flow board it? No. <laughs> I said, you don't know that you pull them against it. Yeah. Oh. I've, I've told him about this before, but him telling me that, it stuck in my mind all those years ago. Yeah. And I had just started driving. I hadn't even been driving a year. And I had to use that theory to see if it actually worked. Not by, for fun of it or by choice. I've told y'all this story in the previous episode. Uh, I had a green horn, whatever you want to call him. He didn't have no common sense. And he goes to get off the interstate not realizing, because it's dark, it's at nighttime, that it's one of those wraparound exits. You know, it's gonna, you have to slow way down. He, I guess he didn't pay attention to the sign that says uh, exit 20 miles an hour. It was there for a reason. And he probably hit it doing 45 or 50, and it's a miracle to God we didn't roll over. Uh, he threw me out of the bunk. I landed up near the, the, the between the driver's seat and the, and the passenger seat right there next to the handbrake. I reached up and grabbed the handbrake, and I hollered at him to step on the gas, and he started, you know, going crazy. What, what? And he finally did it, and just in time before we rolled all the way over, and uh, the truck sat back down and up, and, we still went off into the dirt, but we didn't we didn't roll over. I mean, we were able to drive it out of there and keep going. Because if you've been out uh, between San Diego and Casa Grande, you know it's mostly just dirt around everywhere anyway. And uh, not a lot of deep ditches and stuff like that out there you have to worry about. But uh, that, that saved my life. Me thinking and responding as quick as I did and him telling me that. If he'd never told me that, I would have never known about that. We might not be sitting here talking right now. I don't know. But I really appreciate everything he's taught me over the years. It's, it's just, it's, uh, it's, it, it's, it, you just, you don't know unless you have somebody that can teach you stuff like this, how much it helps you when you get out on the road and um, you start driving. Now, you left Charles Patterson. What did you do after you left Charles Patterson? What did I do after then? After you left from teaming with me, I know it, whatever you did, it had to be a step down. It couldn't. <laughs> no, I, I went to Dallas. Yeah, I went to Dallas and opened businesses. Mm -hmm. So have you ever? Did, huh? were you, were you, and you bought a truck, right? After that? Yeah. 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 And uh, a few years after that, eventually he hired me again. So I've actually driven for you with a CDL and without a CDL. Yeah. <laughs> we had a lot more success the first time around without the CDL. 
Yeah. Second time around, uh, we got T-boned out in uh, Dallas by someone who wasn't paying attention and didn't have patience to wait for me to make my turn. Um, yeah. So he had the truck in the shop for a little while. <laughs> and I ended up going back to uh, MSJ trucking. But that's way episodes seven or eight, somewhere down the road. Uh, we're still with Charles Patterson right now. And he he was my co-driver for a short period of time. And he left and uh, went to... Uh, on to bigger and better things. He went out to Dallas, took the money, and um, grew a grew a successful business out there uh, with uh, produce, tomatoes mostly, mm -hmm. and uh, was able to buy a truck. I think he bought more than one, actually, didn't you? I didn't? bought five already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he, he's always been real good with uh, produce and uh, trucking in general, stuff like that. And I've learned a lot from him. I always felt like, you know, if I couldn't make it in trucking, I could find something to do just based off the uh, being around him, you know, learning stuff from him. Um, I mean, I learned from an early age, like what, 16 years old, I learned yeah. how to hustle. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, this ain't no lie. I, I, I think I've told this story before in, in the first uh, or second episode, somewhere in there. He, uh, when we first started together when I was 16 that summer, all we had was his van and $5 his daddy, my granddaddy, gave us, gave me oh. to eat. Yeah. And I invested in it in him, and it worked out. <laughs> we got some to boxes, and we ended up getting some tomatoes out of a coal chute that were still good tomatoes. Yeah. They just wasn't perfect. And sold them, and then bought some more boxes, and got even more, and then just kept building, building, and yeah. building. This was all in one day now. We did this in 20, less than 24 hours. Yeah. We started with $5, and in less than 24 hours, we had made enough money to fill that van full of tomatoes. And then we took them up to Columbus, Georgia. Yeah. So that was our first run. Uh, Holland Produce was up to Columbus, Georgia. And uh, maybe in another video, I'll tell you how that went with the uh, with recaps. When we talk about recap tires, I'll bring mm -hmm. up that video. <laughs> He's already laughing because he knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. But um, anyway, I just want to thank you so much for doing this with me and, yeah. uh, and talking to everybody because I think there's a lot of people out there that uh, miss the old days a little bit, but when they hear you talk about the trucks that you had to drive, I think they wouldn't trade what they have now. <laughs> uh, I think we'll put up with the ELDs and, and everything for, for now to keep yeah. the trucks that we have. <laughs> if, so. if you could drive one for about a year, get you one without an air conditioner, of course, you understand. Yeah. No, you, never, you never, don't never want to. Yeah. Oh, well, I had one, and it almost killed me. I got out of a truck paid for years ago and went and helped a friend of mine, drove for him, because he had a new truck. I, I couldn't, it, it just key. Yeah. That one would. Yeah. It, it's key. And I, I was running, I don't know, Albuquerque back, back and forth. Uh, Florida, back to Atlanta, back to Albuquerque, back to Wilmington. I got caught one time in Wilmington up there, North Carolina. And uh, I was driving an old Mac. It was pretty good size. It had a 300 uh, Mac in it, five speed. I started to leave our hurricane coming in, hitting. The time it got me loaded, I was getting out. It, everybody's already closed the place down and, and going home evacuating. I started to leave there, cut my wipers on, and they, they broke. I'm sitting there stuck in a hurricane, and I had to drive about 150 miles in the rain to get away from it. That was a miserable trip. I ain't never wanted another Mac either. <laughs> that done it. Yeah. Well, the truck I have is a sister to Max. It's a uh, Volvo Max. So, but the technology since the one you oh. had then and the one we have now is way better. Oh yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. I really appreciate you doing this, sitting down yeah. and, and talking to people. I think they really uh, got a lot out of it. I hope you did. And so, uh, like I said, he, he drove with me for a short period of time at Charles Patterson Trucking. Um, probably within a year and a half after he left, I left Patterson as well. And um, what happened was I was just pushing myself too hard and uh, doing things I shouldn't be doing. I never took any illegal drugs. That's the honest to God's truth. I took a lot of caffeine pills, and some of you might have heard the Magnum 
uh, was it 357 Magnum caffeine pills? Those were brutal back in the day. But um, it was a so combination. combination of taking all the caffeine and everything else. I was getting sick. I had some paychecks bounce. And when the paycheck starts bouncing, it's time for you to bounce and get up out of there. So uh, that's what happened. I left and I went to another trucking company. And um, I'll tell you how I left and where I went in the very next episode of My Trucking Life. Truth, Trucking, and Tribulations from the Trucker's Table. Episode number six. So y'all be watching for it. It'll be coming out soon. Thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing, and sharing. And we'll talk to y'all later. Y'all stay safe. Thank you.